So we're going to learn how to do round twining for a base. Lots of patterns call for them, different kinds. I've got my reed marked. I actually have it marked in the center. And then this direction asks for it to be marked on one inch from either side of that center mark on the pieces. I like to use tile pieces because it's a hard surface. You can use wood, but when you use the T-pin to hold everything in, that's also gonna stick into the wood. So whatever you have that protects your table and the pin doesn't go through is fine. It really, it really doesn't matter what you decide to use. So um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna lay these spokes. What I, what I start to do is I put the, I put the pin in the, in the middle. Of the half of the halfway point okay I'm gonna do that with all of those put the handle one on the bottom this is the little apple basket I have had this pattern for many many years oh, that split my reed we'll see this is an old this is old reed so I'm hoping this all works out okay <laughs> I'm giving it a shot. I just want to show you the basic idea. So I have them all pinned together. You can see I have the pin sticking out a little bit. I won't need quite that much to stick out because what's going to happen is the pin's going to make it not lay level. So I kind of push it down a little bit and then I'm going to spread my pieces apart so that they are fairly even. You're not going to be able to see the big handle piece that I have here um, coming. And yes, the pin may come out. You just have to put it back in again. Um, so you're going to spread those pieces out evenly. I'm going to put my handle to go side to side and I've got four other pieces. So I'm just going to kind of like, you know, like I'm cutting a pie, um, get those evenly spaced. And the reason for the inch mark is um, that is where the reed, when you start, is going to go, when you first start to put the reed on the twining piece. I have a much longer piece there. Okay. All right, so I've got my, I've got my, my spokes. I'm gonna push this up just a little bit because it's pushing against my body and isn't going to be able to be seen as well. Okay, so I've got my piece of, of uh, number two round soaking in here. I'm gonna do like you do like you normally do with all twining in the other videos, the other video that I have. You're going to take it, let me get it here. Oh, see my things moved. <laughs> if, you're, if your spokes do move like this, it's okay. Um, I just try to make sure that the middle, the middle one um, is definitely, you know, one's going vertical, one's going horizontal and I space the other the other pieces in just to kind of make it even. So just like the other twining, you take the two end pieces. If I could get this long piece untangled here. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna take the two end pieces and they're gonna be slightly off center. If you can see that, here, put against the blue here. Just gonna take it slightly off center and you work your way to the loop. And when you get to the loop with your needle nose pliers, you're just gonna squish it just gently. You don't have to do it hard. Just to smush the pieces together. And then when you bend it, it will crack and break. And then I'm gonna start here on the top one cause it's just as easy. And this is, this is something you have to kind of get used to doing and get used to, you know, it moving and doing what it's not supposed to do. I'll give you some tips of what I do to help and hopefully that will help you also. Oh, hang on a second. I didn't put that in the center. All right, let's try that again. Sorry about that. Okay. So bring it down. To the pencil mark on that first spoke. And it really is exactly like the twining you would do on a, on a rectangular or square base. Basically, the one on top always goes behind. And, and what I do is I keep my finger on the reed, the round reed on top of the mark. 
I take the one on top, put it behind, kind of position it to make sure it's where I want it to be, get the reed on the pencil mark, and I hold it down. The one on top, I kind of bring this down here to the a pencil mark to help. You can see it's moving around. It's okay, you just have to keep adjusting it. Uh, bring it down to the pencil mark. It looks much more difficult than it is. I'm also doing it in a position that I'm not used to doing it, so try to make sure you can see it. But So bring this one down, bring this one to it, and you can spin it so it's always working at the top. So I'm gonna put my finger where the reed meets the pencil mark, bring this one down towards it, put my spaces between it, take the one on top, go behind. Just keep repeating that pattern. Put your finger on. Get those down to the pencil mark. It is helpful if you take this one that's behind on the other one and get it down there to start with. It is easier just to move uh, that one then and then move the other one. And just keep moving it around. Just try to position so they're fairly equal. They may not be exactly the way you want them to be. But you don't want any too close together because then you'll have a hard time getting the other set of spokes in. And I just keep my, putting my finger on that round reed on the pencil marks. Okay, now I'm back to the beginning. And for the most part, my pencil marks are covered. I can kind of, I see a couple that aren't quite, and if it's not exactly on, it's okay. As long as it looks the same pretty much the whole way around, you're gonna be all right. So now I can take my pin out because it's anchored in there. I can actually move my tile. And I'm just gonna weave myself around. Now this direction tells me to do it six times around. So I'm just gonna do that quickly because I wanna make sure I show you. And of course this is a long piece so I have to keep untangling it. But I wanna show you how you add the other pieces and how you include them in. And it's best to have, um, and some with bigger baskets sometimes is a little more difficult, but it's best to have um, a really long piece so that you have ends left over when you go to add the other sp spokes and join them together. Um, you don't wanna run out of reed right as the time you're adding additional spokes um, because you can use those, the ends of the, of the round to, that you have left over to anchor them in and get them in there and add other reed later if you need to. So I'm just gonna go around just watch this for a little bit. Hope it doesn't make you too dizzy. I'm gonna go ahead and mark my first one that I started on so I know where I need to finish. So I put an X here on this one. I can see my loop there. I've not done a round basket twining uh, with handle pieces that are longer than the spokes, so I'm accustoming myself to these spokes coming around and catching things as I spin it. So, But the idea is to keep them close together. You don't want any gaps between them. And you just are doing the same procedure. I love twining in a circular motion. I just, I just really enjoy this. It's, I find it very comforting. Uh, and you just keep going around. So, yeah, okay, just there's my there's my starting one. So I've done one, two, three, four, five rows around. This is my well, I should say I'm starting my fifth one. Looks like I'm gonna have some tail left, which is good. All right, I'm back to that first one and I'm gonna do one more time around. I'm back to that first one. I'm just going to put that one behind to get started again. 
All right, now I have it marked for another reason too, because now when I add my other spokes, I'm gonna be able to see exactly where I need to start with those. So what I'm gonna do is take these other spokes, which I only marked in the center. Here it is. I only marked it in the center because I didn't need to worry about the half inch inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take those other four that I have in here. Five, five I have in here, sorry. And I'm going to do the same thing with them. I'm going to poke the hole through the middle of the halfway mark in the center of the spoke. That one I think I rubbed off. <laughs> I think it's there. Okay. I'll be able to find out. All right. And then I'm going to put those back in that hole. I need my tile again so I don't want to store my table. I'm going to put that back in the hole and I'm going to spin these now so they are in between the spokes that were already there. So I'm just going to make sure that all of my holes, and I usually take the one on the bottom and I drop it off and then the next one on the bottom and I just go around and drop off the bottom one into the hole until I have all the holes filled. All right. And again, you look at them so they're fairly evenly spaced. Now here's where I ended. Let me get this one a little bit better here. All right. And now those ends that I had, I hope is enough to go the whole way around, but we'll make it work if it doesn't. Now we're going to include all of those spokes now. We're going to weave every single one. So it's a few more than we had before. Now these new ones will probably shift and move a little bit too. You're, the ones that were already anchored in will not. So you want to work on these a little bit. Just keep putting them back in place if they move around. Spin your, your thing. Just watch, just watch your chest or your stomach, whatever might be against the table that could cause the spokes to catch and then push them out of shape. That's what's happening in my situation. I'm trying to hold the camera at an angle where you can see. So um, I'm holding them in an odd situation for me, but I think we'll be just fine. Okay. And you're just gonna keep on going around. already anchored so I got to pull that one a little bit push those down as far as you can go you may not be able to get it all the way down and that's okay if you don't you just don't want a huge gap there so the one on top goes behind just like you were doing before way around that's good and start it going and then the pattern this pattern calls for you to do this for another um, another six times around or until the base reaches four and a half inches in diameter if it becomes oblong you know don't don't get upset about that if it's not exactly round it's okay okay I'm back at the beginning so I'm gonna go around for my second time and I'm gonna use this read up until I run out of read. And I'll show you what you can do. So I'm just gonna keep on going. I threw another, another piece of round read, number two round, into the water. I can take this pin off now because I've got everything anchored in. Okay, I'm just about at the end with one of them. So you have to finish on top of a spoke. <clears throat> um, and so I'm gonna finish on this one because I don't have enough to go to another one. And what you do, it's really very simple. You can tuck it in if you want to, but what they recommend is to cut it just a little longer than that spoke. And then when you pull in another piece, which I'm gonna cut in half because they're way too long. Hang on 
one second. So you just lay that piece the opposite way. So the end is there. And yes, it will stick out a little bit, but it really isn't gonna be a major problem. And then be careful when you go to pull it that you don't pull it this way, because you'll pull it out. And I'm gonna continue, hold it down. I'm gonna continue to weave. And uh, let's see, I think I'm gonna stop on that one because I don't really have a lot of room. And, and this, this is popping up, that's okay because the next row that you do will tuck it back in. So I'm gonna cut this one just a little past the width of the reed, the spoke. I'm gonna take the other piece just past the other side of it. And that one's gonna go behind. Just be careful not to pull it out. And once you have gone a couple spokes, you can take your finger off of there and not have to hold it anymore. And it should be able to go. So, and then you're gonna do this for six more times or whatever they're asking you to do. Uh, that's basically it show you how to finish it and I'll, the way we finish we way we actually finish the twining will also be the way you could connect read if you don't like the pieces sticking up like that I know when I go to stain I sometimes have to I have to really watch myself so here's back to that spoke so when I do this you can see that it brings those pieces down it pops up a little bit and that's okay but you don't want them to be any shorter because you want to make sure that they don't pop out and then you start to lose your start to lose your thing. So there's that piece, I locked it in. And it is possible, especially with a larger base, that you may even have to do piecings several times. Uh, but just take note that when you first start, you use one piece folded in half and then when you go to do any additional rows, you take a long piece and cut it in half and you're gonna be using uh, two separate pieces because you may or may not start and stop at the same spot with the pieces. So you just kind of cut a piece in half and, and go from there. And it's very easy also to tell how many rows you have done around because now you're looking at, you can see the space here and you're looking for the, the rows above the space getting almost to my center mark here. So here's my center mark. I can tell that I joined right about in here, right about here, and so I have three, three rows done. Yep, definitely gonna have to add another piece. That's good, be another way to show you how to do it. I love to spin mine, it just makes it so much easier to work on it. Now let me see if that one's that one I'm gonna leave like that because it's long enough and I'm not even gonna cut it. If I need to do it later, I will. I'll take this one behind and I'll probably cut that one there. Oh, this one's gonna go at the same spot. That is not that is not always common that they will be at the same spot. Um, let me measure here just to see where I am. going to take this one over to the other side of the spoke. I'm going to go ahead and anchor it behind so it's tucked in there. This one's right beside it. Do the same thing other side. Tuck it behind. I'm going to be careful not to pull them just yet and maybe get three more spokes in there. You can see those are really popping up. Some people really don't like that and that's okay. That's okay if you don't like it. You don't have to you don't have to deal with that if you don't want to. I'm gonna stop when I get back to my X. 
let's see, so that's four. I'll just finish this row and stop when I get back to my X because I think that's gonna be plenty big enough. Make sure you catch those ends and pull them down and get them kind of out of your way. And this is the very bottom of the basket, so if you put things in, it could catch it and, you know, cause them to bend a little bit. For the most part, it's it's not too bad. All right, well, I'm back to the beginning now where my X is. And you always finish on top of a spoke, the one you started on and the one to the right of it. So this is exactly like what we did when we were doing a base. You pinch it in the middle of the spoke. So I'm gonna take my number two round right in the middle. I'm gonna pinch it. I'm gonna bend it. I've got several rows I could tuck in under. I don't have to do all of them. I'm gonna cut it so it's long enough though and with, with an awl or uh, a fit or whatever you might have, knitting needle, you're gonna tuck it under there so that the leg comes down and it sits flat at the top. That's the way to finish it off. So pinch, bend, cut, leg in and anchor the piece in. My awl's in the way. And there you have it. That's how you would round a base. Now what I'm going to do next is soak the base and get ready to upset my spokes and finish my weaving. <laughs> 